In this video, I want to show you how you can create a report to monitor and trigger refreshes using Power Automate within Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's go through this scenario. So let's say you have a Power BI report that you want to refresh on demand. You know that with the right permissions um, and access you're able to click refresh now to refresh that data but what if you want to give your clients the ability to refresh the data themselves let's have a look at this example here this is the grocery sales report that we created that basically pulls data from SharePoint and if you want to know how we do it uh, I covered it in a separate video so check that out if you haven't yet so at the moment this report is published in the Power BI service so it's in the web version and if you wanted to refresh the this report, um, you'd normally go to the data sets themselves uh, and refresh it from there. So if you have the correct access and permissions, you'll be able to go to the um, uh, Power BI uh, data set hub and refresh it here. But if you're a client, uh, you might not have that. So what we want to have is the ability to refresh the report directly into the report page itself. So what I have here is the same report in my local desktop file. It's opened with the Power BI desktop. And as you can see, we have the grocery sales uh, table here. And I've added a different table here, the last refresh date, which essentially just gives me the current date uh, right now. So if you look here, it's just one column and one row that just gives me the current time, uh, date and time now. And if I just refresh that really quickly, you'll see that it just gives me the current date and time now. And how I did that is actually pretty simple. I just created a blank query here and um, I've added a new column. Uh, that just uses uh, date time dot local now, which gives me the uh, the date and time. So pretty simple and pretty handy to use. This is what we'll use to track uh, when the Power BI report has been refreshed. So what we want to do is we want to add a button in our Power BI reports to trigger a refresh in our grocery sales data sets when we click that button. And we'll use the last refresh uh, column to track when the report was last refreshed. And for this, we'll utilize the Power Automate visuals feature that was added for the July 2021 updates down here. If you haven't updated to the July 2021 update, you might have to download this from the app source, but don't worry, it should do the exact same thing. So first, let's bring in the last refresh dates into a card for us to use. Let's hide that and let's make the date label slightly smaller. Here we go. And then now let's uh, use the Power Automate for Power BI. We'll give you this, um, but all you need to do is hit edit. Now from here, we can create a new flow. Uh, we can do a new instant flow. So when the button is clicked, we want it to do something, right? So now we're gonna search for Power BI right here. And this is what we want. We wanna refresh a data set when uh, the button is pressed. So we're gonna look for our uh, data set here. We know that it's in the Northwind workspace. The data set is called grocery sales. Hit save. Uh, save and apply. And that's it. So now we can go back to the report. Now you can see that we now have a button that we can use to refresh the data sets in our Power BI report. So we'll just customize this just a little bit so it's a lot more understandable how to use. So we'll go to the formatting pane, we'll change the text, uh, button text, we'll change this to refresh data set. 
So now we'll hit publish and let's create it in the same workspace. So let's now have a look at that grocery sales um, report that we've created. So now we have the same report, the same grocery sales report, except that we have the ability to now refresh the data set itself. So now let's hit refresh and see how this works. So if we hit refresh here and we'll give it a minute because it takes about a minute for the report to refresh. Once the minute is up, um, take a note of this refresh time. It should update to about 37, 7.37 p.m. So here we go. So now it's updated to the time. Uh, that's just the time zone in the Power BI service is a little bit different. So it's showing 6.37, but you can see that it's been triggered by this button. And to show you um, exactly what happened there, we can open the related content here and I can show you the uh, refresh history here. So you can see it was triggered at 7.37 and the refresh was done complete, uh, is completed. So that's how you set up a button that triggers a Power Automate. So it's pretty easy, right? Uh, let me show you something else. So if I open the lineage view here, uh, which is, uh, it will show us the elements within our workspace and what is linked to it. So you can see this is the report and the data set that we have refreshed. And you can see that uh, this data set is connected to a data flow, which in turn is the one that's connected to the SharePoint. Now, if you don't know how to use data flows already, I've covered it in a separate video. So check it out if you haven't yet. But essentially with data flows, um, because it's uh, separating the ETL process from your data set, it means that by itself, uh, it needs its own refresh schedule as well. So when you refresh the data set, uh, it's not enough because you're only refreshing the data that's coming from the data flow, but you need to refresh the data flow as well. So if you want to create a report that solely tracks the last refresh dates and gives you the ability to refresh the data flows and the data sets together, we'll need to create a separate report altogether. So we're going to start from scratch so you can follow along uh, in this demo. So we're going to create a new file here. We're going to create a new report. Before we start creating anything, you want to make sure that on your options, under the preview features, you need to make sure that you have the direct query for PBI datasets and AS enabled. Uh, that's because we need to create sort of like a composite model uh, connecting directly from the datasets and also to the data flows. So we're going to start with connecting to a data flow first, um, and that's actually pretty easy. So if we go to get data and Power BI data flows, if you're logged in as the same account um, that has access to the Northwind workspace that you have, you should be able to find your data flow here. And we want to bring in the uh, last refresh date. So with the same thing with the grocery sales data flow, we also created another table there that just extracts the last refresh date. So we'll hit load for now. So you'll see that you have one table here. Um, we'll just rename this just to uh, distinguish it with the data sets later. We'll bring the last refresh date here. And then we'll have to do the same thing. So we'll create a Power Automate. Oops. Create the Power Automate here, hit edit. Now you see you have this one that we've just created. So this is the one that refreshes the data sets uh, and we'll reuse that later. Um, but for now, we'll need to create a new instant cloud flow. So again, when a button is clicked, we want it to do something. So now we want to type data flow. So we want to refresh the data flow when this button is clicked. The same thing as before, workspace. I'm going to look for the north wind and grocery sales data flow. Save. 
save and apply and back to reports. So now you have a button that refreshes uh, and tracks your data flow progress. We'll just rename it so that it's a little bit more descriptive, descriptive is what I meant to say. So we're going to save this. We're going to name this uh, monitor and refresh. And we're going to publish this into our workspace here. So we've opened that and so take a note of the time. It's uh, 2.26 p.m. Uh, which is the last refresh date of the data flow. So I'm going to click the button and let's give it a wait. Um, just to visualize to you what is happening, what it's doing is if I just refresh here, you can see that we have a separate report that is connecting to the data flow. And you can see that that button click has triggered the refresh to happen in the data flow here. So if we look at the refresh history, you can see that. So this is the trigger. So we pressed it just a couple of seconds ago. So we'll give it a minute for it to finish refreshing. So now it's been refreshed. So if we look at the refresh history here, you see it's completed. And that's exactly what we wanted with this, um, with this report, the monitor and refresh. So now let's also add a way to monitor and refresh the grocery sales report. Uh, and to do that, we'll go back here and we'll try to get data from Power BI datasets because you can connect to the data sets within your workspaces that you have access to. So we wanna get data from this grocery sales data set. We hit okay here. Um, what it does is it uh, imports the data from that data set into our model. Uh, but don't worry because we won't do anything else beyond just getting the last refresh dates. And right here, We'll do Format Painter just to make it simple. And again, we'll add another Power Automate button. And this time, because if you remember, we've already created that flow. All we want to do is for this button to do the same thing as before. So we want to just use this one and hit Apply. And now we have an action. So this button just refreshes that data set when we press that button. I'm just going to rename this to refresh data sets. And there you have it. So you now have a report that has the ability to track the last refresh dates of your data flows and your data sets, as well as trigger them with a click of a button using Power Automate. And that's really it for this video. Thanks for watching as usual. Give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really enjoyed this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.